Hi, I'm John the Mouse. In this video we're going to talk about the different grades of diesel and some different blends that are available to you. This is some of the stuff I go over in detail at John the Mouse University. With better information you can make better decisions, not only on your transportation business, but on your personal transportation. So, let's get into it. Diesel is the fuel of choice of trucks because it has 12% more energy per gallon than gasoline. I'm going to work down on the distillate tower starting at the kerosene area. Kerosene, K1, also known as Jet A fuel. This is the lightest fuel oil for home heating. It is made by refining number one fuel oil and filtering impurities out. The result is much cleaner burn, so it's safe for indoor use. Jet A is the most common in the USA. Specifications require a freezing point maximum of 40 below Fahrenheit or that's 40 below Celsius. Just as a quick side note, let's go over some of the other jet fuel grades. Jet A1 will go down to negative 53 Fahrenheit, that is negative 47 Celsius. Jet B, used in northern Canada, will go down to negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit or that's negative 60 degrees Celsius. Number three jet fuel used in China will go down to negative 53 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's negative 47 degrees Celsius. TS1 used in Russia will go down to negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 50 degrees Celsius. Number one diesel fuel and kerosene share many similarities, making them nearly interchangeable in certain applications. Both fuels have a lower cloud point and pour point compared to the number two diesel, making them suitable for colder climates. That's why you see on different military vehicles a tag that reads they can use different types of fuel to run on. 1D, number one, diesel fuel, also known as diesel number one, or 1D. This is light distillate fuel oil has a 90% recovery point in the distillate tower at 550 degrees Fahrenheit. It is primarily used in cold weather conditions because it has a lower gel point the number two diesel. The cloud and pour points are below negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a negative 29 degrees Celsius without adding any other additives to the fuel. Number one distillate is a, another light petroleum distillate that sits in the middle of the number one diesel and the number one fuel oil in the distillate tower. Now, depending on what your on the market's doing, it can be either used as diesel fuel or as fuel oil. Number one fuel oil is another light distillate fuel that has a 90% recovery point in the distillate tower at 550 degrees Fahrenheit and a 10% recovery point at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This fuel oil is used for portable outdoor stoves and heaters. 2D, or number two diesel, has a higher energy content than number one diesel. The most common type of diesel fuel used for on-road vehicles in the USA. When the temperature drops below approximately 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius, will start getting cloudy and will gel before it gets below 10 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 12 degrees Celsius. 
It's a distillate fuel that has a 90% recovery point in the distillate tower at 640 degrees Fahrenheit. Used in high-speed diesel engines such as those in locomotives, trucks, and automobiles. Number two distillate is a petroleum distillate that sits in between the number two diesel and the number two fuel oil. That can be used as either diesel fuel or a fuel oil, depending on the market's needs. Number two fuel oil, heating oil. This distillate fuel oil has a 90% recovery point in the distillate tower at 640 degrees Fahrenheit to a 10% recovery point at the 400 degree Fahrenheit. Used in commercial, industrial, domestic heating, atomization type burners for heating. 4D, number four diesel fuel oil, is a heavy distillate fuel. The approximate boiling range in this distillate tower is from 1000 degrees Fahrenheit to 651 degrees Fahrenheit. It also can be a blend of distillate and residual oil. It is used in commercial burners located in industrial plants. Viscosity range allows it to be stored at low temperatures. It does require preheating for handling in extreme cold weather. Low and medium speed diesel engines will use the fuel in industrial settings. Number five, residual fuel oil, also known as Navy Special. This type of fuel oil has a medium viscosity. The USA government uses it in a steam piled vessels, railroad steam locomotives, like the Madam Queen steam locomotive was a coal fired, but in 1940 it was converted to fuel oil. Santa Fe R Railroad used number five residual fuel oil as the fuel it burned. There are 1,250 power plants left in the USA that are operating with that fuel oil. Number six, residual fuel oil, bunker fuel or bunker C. Because of its high viscosity, requires preheating between 219 to 261 degrees Fahrenheit at the burner to permit atomization and to be pumped to storage tanks. Some old buildings in New York City burn this bunker fuel, generating some soot pollution for the city. Others use our production of electric power, space heating, vessel bunkering, and other industrial purposes because it's cheap. In 1898, the Anheuser-Busch power plant was the first in the USA to use a diesel engine using crude oil as fuel to create electricity with the help from Dr. Rudolph Diesel. This 60 horsepower motor was designed to vaporize the crude oil in a cylinder with pressure, resulting in more heat, causing it to ignite and explode inside the cylinder. Many municipalities in the USA after that started to generate electricity with the Bush Sulzer engines after that. In this next section, we're going to go over some terms and some different blends of fuel. Winterized diesel, seasonal. They blend number one and number two diesel to help prevent gelling for cold weather of the area. Remember that they are blending it to an average temperature for that area. If it gets colder than normal, it will gel on you. Or if you take the fuel, to a colder location. You can always add an additive to your fuel to help bring the temperature down that the gelling point occurs. The exact 
temperature at which the gelling will occur will vary depending on several factors. Your quality of fuel, how much biofuel you have in the fuel, wind chill, and how big a tank you have. Ultra low sulfur diesel, or ULSD. The EPA introduced in 2006 for on-road vehicles. It contains 15 parts per million ppm of sulfur or less. It was to improve air quality and reduce emissions. Now it's the standard diesel fuel in the USA for most vehicles. Low sulfur diesel, LSD. EPA introduced this standard to diesel before the ultra-low sulfur diesel. It contains up to 500 parts per million of sulfur. It has largely been phased out for non-road use in the USA. California diesel, LCFS, low carbon fuel standard. This fuel is only found in California. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, Federal Regulation 1090.625, Exemptions for California Gasoline and Diesel Fuel, reads, California gasoline or diesel fuel must not be used in any part of the United States outside of the state of California unless the manufacturer or distributor reassertifies or redesignates the batch of California gasoline or diesel fuel as specified in paragraph D or E of this section. The California LCFS regulation does not apply to any fuels used in interstate locomotives, ocean-going vessels, and deficit-generating fossil propane and CNG used in school buses purchased prior to the January 1, 2020. California accounts for nearly all renewable diesel consumption in the United States, but most of it isn't made here in the United States. It is imported, mostly from Singapore. And from what I can tell, Singapore imports many types of feedstock to turn it into biodiesel to export. Biodiesel. This fuel is derived from animal fats, plant oils, or recycled restaurant grease. Can be blended with other diesels, or it can be used on its own, labeled as B100. The common blends are B20, 20% biodiesel, B5, that's 5% biodiesel, and then 95% petroleum diesel, You'll see on a lot of fuel pumps, they just have a label saying up to 20% for biodiesel. They give you no information on what type or how they made it. Cloud point of biodiesel depends on what type of feedstock is made from. Soybean at 34 degrees Fahrenheit or 1 degree Celsius. Palm oil, 62.6 degrees Fahrenheit, or 17 degrees Celsius. Tallow is between 53 to 62.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 12 to 17 degrees Celsius. From what I can find, 80% of the biodiesel made in the United States is soy Biodiesel. E diesel. It's a synthetic diesel. This fuel is made from captured carbon dioxide, CO2, from the air. Infinium's project Pathfinder facility is located in Corpus Christi, Texas. 
This company is backed by Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. Ephidium's e-fuel are made from captured carbon dioxide, CO2, and hydrogen. Note it contains no sulfur in this e-diesel. They use a lot of electricity during this process to break down water to get hydrogen. Then mix it with carbon dioxide. It's probably why they call it electrofuels. This is probably why Bill Gates is investing in nuclear, trying to get the CO2 captured and pushing to get it hauled in pipelines, building the infrastructure for his e-diesel. Red dyed diesel. The Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, requires heating oil and other distillate fuels that are not for highway use. That includes diesel to be colored with a red dye. The red dye color identifies the fuel as exempt from federal, state, and local taxes applied to fuels sold for use on public roadways and is illegal for use in vehicles that normally operate on the roadways. Ultra low sulfur heating oil, or ULSHO. This heating oil has a sulfur content of 15 parts per million or less. The state of Delaware, New Jersey transition to this ULSHO in 2016, and all six New England states transition to the low sulfur heating oil on July 1st, 2018. European diesel. European diesel usually has a higher and cysteine level number, giving it a better ignition quality. Marine diesel. Just for the marine applications, it has a blend containing a tiny amount of heavier fuel oil in it. Most often will have a higher sulfur content than road diesel. However, in designated emission control areas, or ECAS, ships are required to use fuel with a low sulfur content to reduce emissions. It seems like they will push this to the ultra-low sulfur diesel too. The next section, we're going to get into the transportation of diesel and gas to the station that you fill up at.